April webinar, the Wolf Connect training session. Stephanie Shaw will be presenting today's webinar. We have Allison James, Estate and Homes National Director of Growth and Development, Jeff Jabora with us. And we also have Shelley Hoysis, Senior Loan Officer with our preferred lender, Movement Mortgage. I will go ahead and pass it over to Jeff to start. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. This is a great opportunity to learn more about Wolf Connect and all of our in-house systems here. I think this is a great opportunity for training. Please, please do not hesitate to ask questions if you do have any. This is a great opportunity, and if we're not able to get to all of your questions, we will absolutely follow up with you after the webinar. Now, as you know, what my position with the company here is, is recruiting. We have a lot of great benefits of working with our brokerage, and one of them is just that if you recruit other agents, you can get paid for it. The way it works is very simple. If you know of other agents out there that could benefit from keeping 100% of their commission, please do not hesitate to send them my way. It's as simple as sending me their contact information or sending them my contact information. Please be sure to have them let me know that they were referred by you. If they do end up joining the brokerage, you will be paid for it. If you have referred between one and three agents, you will receive 10% of what their plan fee is. For an agent that joins on Plan C, that does include 10% of that transaction fee as well. What gets even better is that if you have referred four or more agents, this increases to 15% across the board. This is not a one-time payment. This is an ongoing payment for as long as your license and their license is with the brokerage. It's a great way to have your plan fee completely paid for to have extra money in your pocket for marketing, to have your board of realtor dues paid for, whatever it may be, a great opportunity to earn extra money and have your money working for you. So once again, please don't hesitate to let other people know about how great it is working with our brokerage. My contact information can be found at the bottom of the slide here. Without further hesitation, I'd like to turn it over to Shelly Hoysith, a senior loan officer with Movement Mortgage. Thank you, Shelly. Hi, Jeff. Thank you. Um, I do know that your recruiting efforts are working because everywhere I go, uh, I talk with loan officers and realtors, and they all seem to be saying, I used to be at XYZ. I'm now with Allison James, so good job on that, Jeff. Um, hi, everyone. I am your senior loan officer for Allison James, and I thought that um, I should really go through our process just a little bit take maybe less than five minutes so that you understand the difference between how movement mortgage works and the average uh, loan officer or bank. So I think traditionally you're used to having the loan officer take the loan application, deal with the, with the client and the gathering of the documents, then they send it off to their processor. The processor takes, you know, a few days to get there. Uh, ducks in a row, they send it off to underwriting, underwriting takes a few days to get their ducks in a row, appraisal may or may not be ordered, and on down the line, and usually by the time I know in California we typically have a 17-day lending contingency, you're most likely calling the loan officer or trying to reach them and find out are we going to be able to remove this, what is going on, do we have an approval. Um, the difference is and early on, let me back up a little bit, also when the loan officer first does the pre-approval, that's probably when you'll get your pre-approval letter, and then you run out and look at homes, and basically you're, you're showing your client homes with a loan officer's best guess on their approval. And Move My Mortgage, I complete a full loan package. I gather everything that I need for underwriting up front at the pre-approval process. I do run the DU, the desktop underwritten approval, all that good stuff, and I can issue the pre-approval letter. From there, though, I don't just sit on the file while you're running around showing homes. We submit directly to underwriting. I hand the file directly to underwriting. At that point, while underwriting is reviewing it, which takes six hours is our goal. Um, so let's say, let's give it 24 hours, let's say that day. Uh, Processing is ordering out all the tax transcripts, everything else that needs to happen for the file while underwriting is in it. I like to call it our, our simultaneous process. So all this is going on simultaneously the next day we're approved. So I can call you and say, hey, I'm glad that you're out looking for homes because they're already conditionally approved. We start gathering the conditions while they're still looking for their home. 
So by the time you've got the house that they like, it's already approved. We're ready to go. You order appraisal and you close. That's one of the good ways that we can guarantee that we do close in 20 days or less because we've done all of the hard work up front. Um, the other reason that we can close so quickly is that, like I mentioned, our process is a simultaneous process. So underwriting, processing, our QC department, appraisal department, myself, we're all in the file and working together simultaneously on our part of the process. So once it's fully approved and conditioned, basically at funding, we reach out to escrow, get the HUD approved by our funding department. Once that's done and loan docs go out, we set up the funding. We don't need to have signed loan documents back. We don't even need a faxed version of the signed loan documents back. We basically, once that HUD is approved and we have final loan approval, we set up the funding according to the timeline where we know that escrow can get the doc signed and title can record. So basically we're saving from an average lender, we're saving about four days on the end and we're saving about four or five days on the beginning, which is why 20 days or less is standard. Um, just on a personal note, this week on Monday I received three contracts. These happen to be borrowers that had not gone through the pre-approval, you know, underwriting process, so we were doing it the old-fashioned way, starting from scratch. All three of those files, the contracts came in on Monday. I sent them over to my assistant on Monday night. It's now Wednesday morning in California, and all three of those files, the appraisals have been ordered. They are all conditionally approved. Conditions have been sent to the borrowers, and we are way ahead of the game. One of them is a 14-day closing, and I got the contract on Monday, and I'm confident we're going to get that done. So. I just wanted to take a few minutes to let you guys know how hard you've got a, you've got a hardworking team behind you here. Um, our underwriting and processing team, they underwrote 400 files over the weekend this last weekend. And I don't know very many banks or lenders that work that hard on the weekend to ensure that we keep our timelines. So thank you so much. Um, hopefully I didn't do more than five minutes, but I appreciate you. Uh, listening in, and if you have any questions, call, text, email me anytime, and um, I'll take the ball and run with it for you. So thank you so much. I want to pass this off to Stephanie so that she can start your training. Thank you, Shelley. So hello and welcome, everyone, to the Agent Wolf Connect training for Owls and James Estates and Home Agents. My name is Stephanie, and I work in the Agent Services Department here at Lone Wolf. I want to start off by welcoming you all to, back to Wolf Connect. Wolf Connect, as you know, virtual office with 24-7 access via this website right here. Um, it allows you to stay connected to your business from wherever you are, whenever you need it. So we're just going to cover a lot of important topics in Wolf Connect today and um, look at the features that you guys can use in the system. Um, just to let you know, following the training, I'll be sending tip sheets and video tutorials on everything that we've covered. So if you have any questions about anything, uh, feel free to refer back to the video tutorials or the tip sheets or contact our agent support line. So as I said, this link is um, the link to your brokerage's Wolf Connect system. This is specific to your brokerage. This is the only place that you will be able to log in, so you will not be able to log in at lwolf.com or any of the Lone Wolf websites. To navigate to this link, um, you can go to your brokerage website, so allisonjamesincorporated.com, click the Login button on the top right, and hit Agent Portal. So just www.allisonjamesinc.com, hit the Login button, and Agent Portal what that will do is bring you directly to this page right here. Um, I do suggest you save it, save it as a favorite at that point for easy navigation. Username for the system typically is your first initial last name. If you need any assistance, don't remember your username, you can contact your administrator or you can contact our agent support team here. Password would have been set when you received the welcome email way back, but let's say you haven't been in in a while, can't remember, you can go ahead and hit lost your password. What that will do is ask you to enter your username and password, or sorry, username and email address, hit reset email, and that will send you an email um, just saying click here and it will show you exactly how to reset your password. I'm going to go ahead and hit log in here. So when you first log into the system, you'll get this pop-up here. What this is is the in and out board. So your office uses this for communication. If they're sending you a message from the system, they can say, hey, 
staff is in or out of the office, and here's a note. Let's say, for example, I'm out showing properties. Please don't send calls to my voicemail. Your administrators will see that when they're sending you a message. So this is always available as soon as you log in, in and out, and add additional notes. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save here. This is our main dashboard of WolfConnect. Uh, it might be a little different from the last time you logged in. As it, you can see here, it's sorted by these tabs at the top. So anything pertaining to real estate can be found under the Real Estate Navigation Menu tab, Communications, Membership, Contact Management, Resources, and Websites. We will be covering all of these tabs in more detail today. Just a few things to note. These widgets here on the front page, they're controlled by your administrator. So anything you see here is set up by the administration team, but you are able to use all of these things that are available to you. So for example, um, some news items, some office links, and a photo album. Anytime that you see a pie chart, that is, um, means that there's a report involving this module. So showings reports, transaction reports, all of which we'll be covering later. Another good thing to note, um, let's say that you're frequently using a section, so you're frequently managing your listings. Um, if you want to add this to your favorites panel over here, you can simply click on the icon and drag and drop it over to your favorites panel. So this is just easy navigation to the modules that you use most frequently. Let's say in a year you say, hey, I haven't managed a listing. I'm going to go ahead and drag it up to remove it. So we refer to this as our favorites pinnable. A few other features of the home page, the WIGO and the calendar here. Uh, WIGO stands for what is going on. I'm going to go ahead and click on it here. It's basically a notification system. So you can come in, click on WIGO, hit this wrench icon in the top right, and set up your WIGOs. They all automatically default to off, and this is an optional thing should you wish to use it. You can go ahead and turn them on by clicking on them. So let's say I want to be notified every time I have a lead to accept. I can click leads to accept hit show this WIGO type, press save, and in the future I will be notified of all the leads I have to accept. So I can do this for all of these items here. I'm going to go ahead and hit this back arrow to bring me back to the dashboard. The next feature here is the calendar. Um, you guys might not have a calendar that you use. You're more than welcome to use the Wolf Connect calendar feature. And from the calendar you can add individual calendars, multiple of them. You can use corporate calendars, and you can add shared calendars to share with other agents in the office. Currently, you can sync this with Outlook. Um, we do not have the ability to sync with Gmail yet, but we are working on that integration. If at any time you navigate away from this main dashboard page and you want to come back to it, you can simply click on this Office tab here on the right, and it will bring you immediately back to the dashboard. So we're going to start first by jumping into our profiles. There's two ways to access your profile, either via the Membership tab under Manage, Agent, and Staff, or with this gear icon up here. So this little gear icon beside our name in the top left-hand side panel, that is a shortcut that will bring us directly into our profiles. When you get in your profile, you are able to see this Edit button here. So by clicking Edit, I'm able to come in, upload a different photo, add my website. I'm also able to add all my social media links in my profile as well. Um, a nice thing about your profile is everything that you add in it will sync to all global websites. So whether it be your brokerage website or your individual agent websites. And I can click Add Website to add an additional website. So let's say I want to add my Facebook, my Twitter, my LinkedIn, and my personal website all in here. I can just keep clicking Add Website, add my links in here, and as soon as I hit Save, it will reflect on my Global Wolf profile. You can also scroll down, um, add the languages that you speak, and add a little bio about yourself here, and this will also appear on the Global Wolf website. The next tab on the profile that I wanted to show you guys was the Message tab. So right under Profile is the Messaging tab. This Messaging tab controls any and all notifications that you receive from the Wolf Connect system. So if you haven't logged in in a while, I do suggest that you come visit your Message tab. As you can see, right now all my notifications are off. So if I set up a WIGO, I'm not going to receive them because my notification is set to off. I can click it and turn the notification on. You're also able, I'm just going to hit Cancel here, 
to add cell phone numbers, additional email addresses. Let's say you have an assistant who you want to receive certain things. You can go ahead and hit Add. Enter the email address or the cell phone number. Choose the format. A uh, thing to point out about your format, um, H, full HTML and simple HTML, these are interactive buttons. So if you're getting emails that you have a lead in the system, you'll want to use full HTML or simple, simple HTML because what you can simply do is click accept lead from that email instead of text which just says, hey Stephanie, you have a lead, please log into Wolf Connect to accept it. So if you log into the system and click this envelope icon here, you can change your message format going forward. Another cool feature, feature of the system is that you can pause your messaging. So let's say you're going on vacation and you don't want to receive any messages. You can hit pause and it will pause your messaging until you get back. You can also forward your message. So if you hit forward, you'll be able to choose another agent in the office to receive your messages when you're gone. Don't forget if you make any changes to the bubbles to hit save at the bottom. The next tab on your profile that we're going to cover is the showings tab. So how the system works, um, when showings are booked in the system, automatic feedback reminders go out following the showings. These are branded to your brokerage and specific to the property, but you can come in here on a per agent level and edit the custom message. So if you wanted to know specifically on each of your listing feedbacks, hey, what did you think of the price? What did you think of the lot size? What did you think of the, the house size? Anything that you want to add to make it custom, you can come in here and add that in here. So like I said, that was in your profile on the showings tab. The custom content will go in this HTML box here. You can also choose to send showing feedback reminders as well as the maximum daily showing feedback reminders to go out. So remember, this is specific to you. Anything you add in here will just go out for your listings that have been shown by another agent. And the last tab on your profile that I wanted to point out to you guys was the public profile tab. So this public profile tab applies to all Global Wolf websites. And when I refer to Global Wolf, I refer to the company website as well as agent websites that have been created within Wolf Connect. So if you wanted to, let's say, um, be, you're known to your brokerage as Stephanie, but you want your clients to see you as Steph, you can come in here, open your public profile, click on Global Wolf website, and update your profile to say Steph instead of Stephanie. And this will reflect on all global sites. You can also choose a different photo. Um, add a different personal summary, and add different contact numbers down here. When you guys um, enter this profile information, this will override what is on your profile. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the real estate um, navigation menu tab here. It's the first one on the left. I'm going to go ahead and hit manage listings. This is just telling me that I didn't save my changes. I can go ahead and say leave this page. When I hit manage listings, I'm able to see um, brokerage listings with non-sensitive information. So I can come in here and search by a variety of filters. I can search by myself as the specific listing agent. I can search by price and status as well. So anything you see here are the filters that you guys can use. How the system works is the listings feed in from multiple IDX boards. So when you submit a listing to your board, it will feed into Wolf Connect. This featured button here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my listing that I've created for training purposes. I did add it exclusively by clicking Add Entry. As you'll see, the source is exclusive. Typically, that would be the MLS board that it fed in from. This featured box here, featured O and A, means whether you want your listing to be featured on office websites and agent websites. So if you don't want your listing to be featured, you can go ahead and uncheck one or both. If you do want it to be featured, or if you're noticing, hey, my, my listing isn't showing up as a featured listing on, this, on the brokerage website, you can come in here and make sure that this is checked. I'm going to go ahead and open a listing. So simply by clicking on it, it will expand the listing. All of this information would have fed in from the MLS, so typically I wouldn't be able to change anything. Pocket listings, you can change information. Something that I wanted to show you on this info tab here is the SEO Manager. So SEO Manager stands for Search Engine Optimization. So this is your rankings in search engines. Um, I'm going to click on it here. As you can see, Lone Wolf adds a little bit of default SEO, so your title is your address. Um, your keywords are basically property type and where the property is located. 
but we do suggest that you come in here, um, do some fine tuning, and beef your listings up for the web. So the, you, the, I'm going to give you an example here with your brokerage website. So the title of our page is here, Alice and James Estates and Homes. So this is the title of their brokerage website. So that's where you put your title. So typically we do um, default it to your address, but you can change it if you'd like. URL translation. This is, um, so if I'm clicking on a website here, this is everything after the .com or .ca. So search engines don't recognize symbols and short forms, so we do suggest that you come in here and default it to your address. You'll see I'm doing a dash. Um, that the search engines recognize dashes as spaces. So now if someone's going to allisonjamesinc.com, they can do slash 123-fake-street, and this will bring them immediately to my listing details page. This is good if you want to market your properties um, on the signs maybe and say, hey, check out the property at um, allisonjamesinc.com slash 123-fake-street. So once again, that's the URL translation. The keywords are the words that we type into Google, so house, uh, La Quinta, California, residential. You can go ahead and update these. And your description here is the description of the website. So as you can see, it typically only pulls a sentence or two, so we do suggest that you write something in there that will have your clients click on it and want to read more about it. If you ever need any tips, you can click on this blue question mark here, and it will give you a, uh, an example of what this means as well as the character count. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And as you'll see, the button has changed from yellow to green. So green, green means that I am using the SEO manager. The next tab that I'm going to show you is the People tab. So the People tab of the listing will feed from the board you as the listing agent. You can come in here and add your seller's information, should you wish. You can either manually add or add from the client contact database, which we're going to be covering later in the session. The next tab is the details tab. This tab is typically locked when it's feeding in from the board because any changes you'd have to submit through the MLS board and they'll sync into Wolf Connect. The next tab here is the enhance tab. So if you wanted to further beef up your listings for the web, you can come in here and enhance um, the remarks. So typically your remarks or your description will feed in from the MLS here, but we do suggest that you come in here and change your abbreviations. Um, like for example, clients might not know that BDR stands for bedroom, and also search engines don't know that. So if you have, short, if you have a character count when you're submitting a listing, I'd suggest that you come in here, uh, update your abbreviations so that clients and search engines know what they mean. As well, your photos will sync in here from the MLS, but you can come in and add additional photos up to 100. You can also add descriptions for them, which helps with your SEO. And further down a bit, you'll also see the virtual tour. So if you wanted to manually add a virtual tour, you can come in here and put your link within here. And don't forget to hit Save. If it feeds in from the board, you'll see it down here under MLS Board Virtual Tour Link. The next tab on our listing is the Showing um, Setup tab. So you can use this tab so that your, um, when, whenever booking your showing, you'll be, you'll be able to see instructions and notes. So instead of writing this somewhere else, you'll be able to write it in the system. You can add lockbox, key code, who the property is occupied by, um, no conditions that that would feed if there was an offer on the property. You can upload a feature sheet. You can add showing instructions. You can add instructions for the showing agent. So for example, um, leave your card, take off your shoes, lock the front door. Something that you want to remind the showing agents to do. You can also set these reminders for yourself. So call the agent before showing, um, and you have to call the occupant before showing. If it's a vacant property and you want to automatically confirm new showings, you can click this. As well, you can click this when the listing agent needs to confirm. The next section is the availability schedule. So this defaults from Sunday to Sunday to 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Let's say they have young children and they don't want any showings after 9 p.m. You can come in here and uncheck these days so that no one can book the, a showing during that time. You can also add specific date and time exceptions. So if the family, let's say, is going on holidays and they don't want anyone to show their home, 
you can go ahead and hit Add Entry. The next tab is the seller showing notifications. So if you want your sellers to automatically receive a notification that there's been a showing booked on the property, you can enter their information in here and check the appropriate boxes. So they can be notified every time there's a new showing, every time there's a confirmed showing, every time there's a canceled showing, or every time a showing has been changed. They are also able to receive feedback, but we do suggest sometimes that you monitor that just in case um, it's not something that you want to go to your clients. You can also add the same for tenants below. The next tab on our listing is the Showing Activity tab. So this Showing Activity shows all showing activity on your property. So every showing that was booked in the system, you'll be able to view in the Showing Activity tab. The nice thing about this tab and with booking showings in the system, you can come in here and send a notification to all your showing agents. So by clicking Send Notification, I have two options. I can send a price reduction message or a quick message. So let's say my property dropped in price and I want to notify all agents. I can just hit send and it will BCC all my agents and I'm able to edit the content. I'm going to show you, for example, a quick message. As you'll see, it pulls all the agents that have shown my listing over here, whether they're internal, external. They'll be on the, over here on the right. They'll all be BCC'd. The title will default, sorry, the subject will default to the address and MLS number. You're able to enter your quick message in here. You can also use HTML should you wish. You can send now send or send later, as well as add attachments up to one megabyte. And go ahead and hit send, and this will send off to everyone from your primary email address. As I said, price reduction, it, it looks exactly the same, just the subject line's a little different, saying the price reduction on this property has been reduced to this. And you can also edit the body. The next tab is the Open Houses tab. So the Open Houses sync from the MLS, but you can also come in here and add Open Houses manually. If you're adding Open Houses, they will sync to the websites. And lastly, the Views tab is the hits on your um, listing on any global website. The next thing that we're going to jump into is still under the Real Estate tab, under the Haves and Wants here. So by clicking Haves and Wants, Haves and wants you can think of as an internal dating system for your listings. So what it really is is marketing your listings internally before they go on the market. So I can say, hey, I have um, a property with three bedrooms in this price range and four bathrooms. I can go ahead, upload a photo if I'd like, and hit this little checkbox here that just um, is a little disclaimer. Hit save. And then I have another agent in the office who entered a want that matches my have. What the system will do is automatically scan the haves and wants, and it will notify both agents via email that there's a match. The next module here is showings. So you guys can, um, your administrators, agents, anyone can come in here and book a showing. So under the Real Estate tab, you can go ahead and click Create for Showing. What that will do is give you a little pop-up on how to create your showing. I'm just going to walk you through it and show you how I can create a showing. So as an agent, it will automatically default my properties. I can go ahead and click on my listing here. So that was step one. Step two is to choose an agent. I can choose an internal agent, enter their name, or I can choose an outside agent, um, search by office name, name, agent name, phone number, MLS ID, any of the above. I'm just going to go ahead and, and book the listing for myself. So click on my name. Then what will pop up is the showing availability schedule. So that schedule that we did earlier um, on the showing setup tab where you said, hey, you can show the property anytime before, after 8 a.m. and before 11 p.m., this will show the availability. So this is um, color-coded. You can see what's not available, what's available, when a showing is booked, and when there's an open house. So I'm just going to choose the time that it's selected for me. If I wanted to change it, I would just check the certain boxes that I'd want. You can also manually enter the date and time here if you didn't want to use the set showing time pop-up. You can then choose the showing type. So is this a showing, an inspection, a preview, or a walkthrough? You can choose whether it's confirmed or unconfirmed. So if you're booking this on your own property and you know it's confirmed, you can go ahead and mark it confirmed. You can choose the agent type. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as buyer broker, but you can use all of these 
drop-down items here. You can choose the call status as well as add a note. At this point, I'm either able to save or save and continue. By hitting save and continue and either entering a new MLS number or an address, I can book another showing for this agent. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save here and save the showing. And now that it's saved, I'm going to exit this pop-up. At any time, I can come in here and view all and view all the showings on my, prop on my properties. As you can see, I have two here. And I can also view unconfirmed showings. So if I'm logging into the system and needing to confirm some showings, this is kind of a summary of what ones you need to confirm. The next submenu item here is transactions. Um, you guys can pull transaction reports from the system. So what these do is they pull from our back office um, broker wolf system that your office uses. So let's say you need to come in here. You can come in at any time and pull any of these four reports. I'm not going to pull up anyone's financial information, but I am going to show you some sample reports. So the agent earnings history, like I said, all I did was hover over the pie chart and click on the report. If I'm frequently using this report, remember, I can drag and drop it over here like I did my other pinnables. So in, in filling out this report, basically you fill out the criteria, hit report, and it will show you what the report looks like. I'm going to go ahead and show you some samples. So this here is our agent earnings history. As you can see, sorted by address, gross, and net, and your totals at the bottom. Our next report is the transaction production. Uh, this is the most common report. It breaks it down by side as well as status. So this report gives you a feel for the areas that you gross the most. I'm going to go ahead and click on this report. As you can see, enter your criteria, hit submit. And this is what our report looks like. Broken down by listing side, selling side, and then new written trades and pending trades and closed trades on the next page. So side as well as status. That is called the transaction production report. And our last two reports, expense statement and agent annual expense summary. So they work the same. Um, once again, fill out the criteria. And I'll show you a sample report. All your descriptions here. Totals at the bottom and months along the top. So that is our agent annual expense summary. When we're on the topic of reports, I did want to show you the showing reports that you can pull. So with, with entering your showings in the system, you are able to message all showing agents, view all your showings, as well as run reports. So once again, the pie chart here. I can choose my report that I want to run from the drop-down. I'm going to show you the most popular one, which is the showings by listing report. So by clicking showings pie chart, showings by listing report, I'm able to run two reports, either a basic report or an advanced report. Basic report will pull all of your showings. So it will pull every property. Um, it will include feedback. And you're able to either view this in the agent view or the seller view. The only difference being that the seller view does not include showing agent's information. The advanced report lets you select a date range, select any statuses of your listings, and select certain listings. So by clicking selected listings, it will show you certain listings and you can pull for just one listing. Um, same thing, you can also choose showing types and you have a few more options here. So you can include instructions, you can include feedback, you can include the lockbox and the key code as well, agent view and seller view. So I like to say a good time for these reports. Um, let's say you have a client who has an overpriced property that um, won't budge on the price. You can show them a report with all the feedback with 10 people saying, hey, the property is overpriced, and maybe your, your seller will reduce the price. So that's all for the Real Estate Navigation menu tab. Next, we're going to jump into Communications. So by clicking Communications, as you can see, I have my Message Center and my in and out board. So in and out board, that's what we discussed um, upon login. You can click it at any time to adjust whether you're in or out of the office. As well, you can see other agents who are in or out of the office just by typing their name in here. The messaging center here, um, what this messaging center is used for is to message internally or 
to agents or to staff, you have two options. You can create a message. It will bring this pop-up. You can type the agent that you want to send a message to. You can also send to your business contacts or your client contacts, which we're going to discuss later. You can add a subject and a body as well. Use the HTML if you'd like. Same format as when we were sending out showing activity messages. The manage messaging here, this is where you'd come to see every notification that you received from the system. So let's say I received uh, an email saying I had a new showing confirmed and I couldn't find the email for the life of me and I really needed to see it. I could just log into my message center here, hit manage, and open up the details of the email. You can also sort start date, end date, um, subject, or message. It's pretty easy to navigate within. The next tab is our membership tab, which we covered, our profile. Um, next we have contact management. So there's three sections of contact management. There's leads, there's contacts, and there's marketing. We're going to start in leads. I'm going to go ahead and hit manage leads here. When leads are received from websites or in the office, um, they will be assigned to you via the lead coordinator. I'm going to go ahead and um, open up Manage here. So as you can see, when I open up Manage, I'm able to see that I have a pending lead because this leads one is flashing. It means there's one lead that has to be accepted. So let's say this came in. Um, someone came into the office saying, hey, I'm looking for a staff. Can you please send her um, me as a contact? So I have to either come in and accept or decline the lead. I can accept the lead by clicking under Action, Accept Lead. It's going to give me a pop-up, say, are you sure you want to accept this lead? Go ahead and click OK. So now you'll see it, my lead is gone. Once you accept the lead, they become a client contact. So from leads, I'm going to click on Contacts, Client Contacts. And you'll see my lead is now a client contact. You can add client contacts manually um, just by hitting Add Client Contact or Import. Uh, add client contact, you'll just have to enter the contact information. Um, first name and last name are mandatory, and we do suggest that you put email in as well. You also can import your clients. So let's say you want to use um, Wolf Connect's CRM going forward. You can import your clients into the system. By hitting import, it's going to give me a pop-up here, and it's going to say, hey, do you want instructions, or do you want to import your file, or do you want to cancel? So by clicking print, you'll see the instructions on how to import your clients into the system. It has to be an Excel spreadsheet, and it has to be in this format. Um, we, Agent Support does have a template of this, so you guys can use it um, if you want to import your contacts into the system and not create your own. Just to let you know, once again, first and last name are mandatory fields. It's really important that you follow this procedure, because if you're sending a drip marketing letter to all of the clients' first names, you don't want their last name showing up in their first name or their phone number showing up in their first name. Once you've created the file, you just simply import it into the system and all your clients will appear. I'm going to go ahead and open up my client contact here. As you'll see, there's a bunch of tabs for my client contact. I'm first going to go to the contact information tab. Here's where you can categorize your buyer. You can choose their source of business. You can call them active or inactive. Um, you can say do not email or do not call should they have requested any of those. You can edit their first name, last name, their phone numbers, their birth date, their anniversary. You can add address, email, website, work contact information, and hit save when you're done. Like I said, only required fields are first and last name, but this is optional should you wish to use it. The next tab is the family information tab. So you're able to come in here and add um, your client's wife, husband, kids, grandparents, anyone who you think might be a potential client for you one day. The Notes tab lets you add different actions. So by clicking Add Entry, I'm able to add an action. So let's say um, you want to, you received an email, and you want to follow up with your client on Friday. By adding a note in here, this will report to your WIGO. So if you're, if you've turned on the WIGO for follow up with clients, and you add a note in here, you'll be emailed a reminder to note to talk to your clients. Hey, follow up with them as per the email you received. The next tab is the Activity tab. The Activity tab shows all contact activity. So by clicking Logs here, you can see how the contact was put in the system or any contact that you, or any activity that you had with them. As you can see, I don't, haven't had any activity with this client yet. 
The next tab is the drip marketing campaign. This is kind of a summary of all the drip campaigns that your client is in. Um, we're going to cover that next. So like I said, just, this is just a summary on a per client basis. And the last tab here is the Manage Searches tab. So what you're able to come in here and do is add a search for your client. So if you wanted to add an entry, you can set up a specific search for your client um, with their price range, their location, their bedrooms, bathrooms, anything that you want. And any time that a property becomes available matching their criteria, it, you, the system will email that property to your client from your primary email address. So this is a good tool if you, instead of you looking at um, the new properties every day, you're able to come in here and update this on your own and automatically send emails by auto emails here. So that is a client contact. Business contacts work the same way, um, exactly the same to add a client contact, to add a business contact. Um, you can import as well, um, open up the contact the same way, and all the tabs will be the same on the left. So business contacts would be your outside brokers, your vendors, anyone that you deal with for business. The next section here is marketing, so drip marketing campaigns. I'm going to go ahead and click campaigns here. Drip marketing campaigns are email campaigns for your clients. So for example, first time home buyers, every holiday, um, specific recipes, a spring cleaning email, any, any emails that you want to go out to your clients. There's two parts to drip marketing. First we create letters. And then we attach those letters to campaigns. I'm going to walk you through it. So I'm going to add a letter by clicking Letters. When you click Letters, you'll see there's a default list of letters that are available to you guys. These are provided by your brokerage. You're more than welcome to use them. As well, you can uh, make a copy of them should you need to edit them and preview them. I'm going to go ahead and hit Add Entry. So I'm going to add my own letter. Um, it's basically a quick wizard to set it up. The first step is choosing a template. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. The second step is choosing a letter name. The email subject is uh, the actual email subject line. So this um, is important that it pertains to your letter. And as you can see, the letter is only available to me. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. The next step in the wizard is your header. So this is just letting you know, click on this green arrow to begin creating your header. You can change the logo. Uh, it defaults to your brokerage logo, but you can upload your own logo. Do you have your own personal branding? By hitting Upload Now, you'll see the logo properties. You can choose the file and upload it. The next step is a background. So you can either choose a background color or a background image. As you can see, we have an image bank here. Um, if none of them suit your needs, you can also upload your own. But there are several, several images in here that you guys can use. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. So it's just letting me know you did select a background color. Um, if you want the image to replace it, click OK. So I'm going to click OK. So there is my header. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. Next is a title. So it's going to appear on the right. As you can see, you can't really see it because it's black font, but I'm able to ch change the text color. This is optional. You don't have to do a title if you don't want. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And this is just saying, hey, you're done creating your header. Go ahead and click Next below to review the letter. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. The next is the body of the letter. So this is the meat and potatoes of the letter. Um, if you want to use source code, you can um, insert HTML. You can insert photos. You can insert hyperlinks. You can insert tables, anything that you want to jazz up your letter. You can also add a mail merge. So let's say, for example, I want to send this letter to 100 clients, but I really don't want to personalize it for each client. I can go ahead and click on this envelope icon here and choose for the system to automatically pull the first name of all of my clients. So to input that, I literally clicked on this little message here, insert mail merge field, chose from the drop down first name, insert. So this is also important um, why you import your contacts into the system correctly so that it automatically does pull the first name, not the client's phone number. So then you add a little more content than that to your letter, but this is just an example for us today. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Um, the next step is the footer of the letter. So this information will auto-populate to your name, your brokerage, your office address, 
Um, you are able to add um, additional URLs, so you can add your office website or your agent website in the footer. You can display an agent direct phone number or an agent mobile phone number in the footer, as well as your license number should you need to in the footer. So this is basically choosing the alignment of your footer. I'm going to go ahead and choose a center alignment. And as you'll note, um, this unsubscribe button down here, this, that's there by law. I'll show you in the next step how you can see who's unsubscribed from your campaign. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and hit next. And hey, I'm done my letter. I can either preview it or save it. So I'm going to preview it. Um, as you'll see, these mail merge fields won't fill until you mail out the letter. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to save my letter. So now my letter is saved in the system. I'm going to move on to the next step. So by clicking Campaigns again, I'm going to hit Campaigns. So now that I've created a letter, I want to attach it to a campaign and send it to my client. So I'm going to hit Add Entry. Like I said, there's some um, brokerage-specific ones that you guys can use, but I'm going to show you for this example adding your own. So there's two types of campaigns you can send. You can send a timeline campaign which is an informative campaign. So for example, letter one on day one, letter two on day seven, letter three on day 30. Or you can choose a specific date campaign. So this would be more for your holiday campaigns, um, something going out on January 1st, something going out on October 31st for Halloween, something going out on December 25th for Christmas. For this example, I'm going to show you a specific date campaign. So I'm going to click Continue. It's going to say, what is your campaign name? And it's going to say, who can use this campaign? Only me. I'm going to choose a letter from the drop-down. So my letter was called List With Me. I can preview it here, should I wish, and choose a date to send my letter out. So let's say we're going to send it out on Saturday. I can add additional letters the same way from the drop-down um, and add up to as many letters as I want per campaign, and then go ahead and hit Save. You'll notice when you hit Save, the Contacts and Report tab will now be, av be available. So I'm going to hit Contacts, and this is going to allow me to add contacts to my campaign. So I can add contacts individually by clicking Add Contacts. The contacts have to be client contacts in the system, or I can add triggers. So by adding contact, it's just going to let me see all my client contacts. I can choose who I want to add. By Edit Triggers, I can add a sp specific trigger. So I can say, I want the system to pull everyone from the client contact category of friend. So when adding your contacts into the system, make sure that if you want them to receive this letter, they're in the friend category. Another trigger that I can add is the web form trigger. So let's say I have a Global Wolf website. I can have anyone who fills out my web form for the first time home buyers more information to automatically receive this campaign. So it's a really cool feature if you, let's say, pull a client con contact category of friends and you send out a holiday campaign for every holiday in the year. Even if you add someone halfway through the year, they're still going to receive all the future letters for the campaign. So it's a one-time setup and it'll be good for the year. The next tab here is the report tab. The report tab basically reports on who's received the campaign. So you can, it'll be sorted by contact name, their category, their source of business, their phone number, start date, and end date, as well as how many letters that they've received. You can search by the filters here at the top, and you can see previous and campaign. So by clicking previous and campaign, that will show you who has unsubscribed from this campaign. Just to let you guys know, any letters that you send from the system are, are coming from your primary email address. So if I hit unsubscribe, it's not going to unsubscribe them from ever receiving emails from you. It's only going to unsubscribe them from this specific campaign. Also, if you send a letter to an invalid email address, you're going to get that bounce back back to your primary email address. The next tab at the top here is the resources tab. Under the resources, we have our file manager and our business directory. I'm going to go ahead and hit files here. You can think of this file manager as an online filing cabinet. So I'm going to point out some company documents here that you guys all have access to. As you can see, you have your own user files fol folder. So you can come in here and upload your own documents. As well, you can expand the company files and office documents and see all the different folders that your brokerage has provided. Specifically, I'm going to point out everything in the corporate folder. Um, any of these folders that you wanted to get information from. So if you wanted a broker phone list, if you wanted office forms, tax forms, you can find them all in here. 
let's say you find a file that you want. I'm, I really need that corporate letterhead. I can double click on it. That will download the file. Or I can click this here and get the file URL from below here. What that will do is give you a link specific to that file. So if I paste this file anywhere into my browser, it'll open up the letterhead corporate. You can also, should you need to send this to another agent or a client, just send them this link and that all they'll be able to see is the attached PDF. You can also search files in here as well by typing in the search field. The next module here is the business directory. So by clicking manage, um, think of the business directory as an internal yellow pages. So how it works is your administrators can add vendors into the system. Uh, if you want to recommend a vendor, your administrator can add them into the system. And you guys can come in here and say, hey, I really need some help on continuing education. How about the CE shop? OK, here's their contact information. I'm going to call them. I'm going to use them. And then after I use them, I'm going to come in here and add a rating and a comment so that all the other agents in my office know how good they did. So that's our business directory. Um, like I said, if you want a vendor added to here, I would suggest contact your administrator and they can add them for you. The last tab here is our Websites tab. Um, by clicking on Websites and Manage, you guys do have the option of purchasing um, websites through Lone Wolf. The price is $59.95 a month. Um, the nice thing about it is it includes um, everything that we just covered today. So it includes your, your IDX feeds for um, your listings for property searches. Um, anytime a client fills out a web form, they come into the system as a lead for you. Um, everything pretty much syncs. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps of creating a website. By clicking on Websites and Manage, you'll see here that you have the option to continue the new website wizard. If you already have a live website with us, there'll be a small icon of your website here, and you can simply click on it to edit it. I'm going to take you through the website wizard right now. So by clicking New Website Wizard, our first step here, step one of eight, is selecting a template. So it says, please select a template. I'm going to go ahead and close this pop-up. And you'll see here, from this scroll bar, we have over 130 templates to choose from. I'm going to show you them um, a little bigger so you guys can see. Our websites are template-based. You are able to customize um, some of the content on your template as well as all of your content on your pages. So here's some examples of some of the templates. Um, these photos can be swapped. We can swap out these call to action boxes. You can update your home page content, and you choose your navigation menu at the top. So I'll just show you a few of our templates. A, a lot of the colors are hard coded. Some of them are branded specific to your brokerage, but um, I suggest choosing a template that you like the features of because we can change the images and most of the content. So like I said, there are over 130 templates for you to choose from. If you wanted to take some time and look through the design bank, you can go to designbank.lwolf.com, select Agent Designs, and you'll see all of these templates here. The next step in our wizard is your personal information. So this information feeds from your profile. You can edit the information if you want for your website. The next tab is our home page content. So your brokerage does provide default home page content, but if you wanted to come in here and add your own, you can do so at this step. You can also add it later, but this is just a step in the wizard. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. This next step is our realtor profile. So this will pull from your profile if you have a realtor profile in it, or you can update it here. Just to let you know, the character limit is 450 characters. The next step in our wizard is the map settings. So here's where you can choose the map location of your property search. So you're able to zoom in specifically on the areas that you focus on and hit show this position and close. That will save the position for you. You can change this also at any time once we get through the wizard. The next step is the registration settings. So these are important because this will allow you to control um, how much stuff a client can see on your website before they have to register. So you can say um, registration is required to search listings, yes or no. Registration is required to view the listing address. And registration is required to view the listings details page. Now anywhere that you say yes, um, it will give the client a pop-up that says, hey, you need to sign up to receive more information. When they sign up, it'll come to you in the system as a lead. So there you go, you have a new contact from someone just looking at your website. The next step here 
is our search engine optimization. So what we spoke on earlier with our listings, you can add a site title, you can add keywords, so used for search engines, and a description. And once again, the pointers are here on the right should you need them. And our last step is our preview. So um, you guys can't push the sites live yourself. You do have to contact agents at owls.com uh, or your administrator for a compliance check just because some boards um, need certain forms to be signed before we can push you live. So at this point, you can edit your advanced settings or preview your website. I'm going to hit edit advanced settings here. And this is going to bring me into the um, page that you'll see once you have a live website, the navigation menu at the top. Here's where I control my navigation menu. So at any time, I can save and preview. I'll show you a quick preview right now. This is just the default. Um, you guys can edit it as much as you want. As you can see, um, I don't have a photo. Um, I don't have any home page content right now, but I'm able to use these boxes. I'm able to use all my navigation menu tabs at the top. So property search my listings, home hunter contact me. If I go back to my website, uh, I can scroll through this navigation menu tab, and I can add any of these pages to my website. So these are all pages that are provided by your brokerage. As you can see, there's multiple web forms. So these are lead generation forms, a contact form, a first time home buyers form, a for buyers, a for sellers, join our team. All of these things you're able to put on your website to generate leads. As well, there's a ca the category at the top called um, company custom web pages. You can drag any of these pages on your website. So they're all informative pages that you guys are able to use. Common questions for buyers, common questions for sellers, am I priced to sell, 22 questions to ask a realtor. All of these are very handy and good for you guys to use on your site. Let's say there's something missing from here that you wanted to add on your own website. You can use the custom web pages tab down below. Create your own custom web page. All you have to do is add the content and it will automatically default to the template that you chose. You can also add web forms, dynamic content, um, web links. It's basically, if you have 100% customization for the contents of your site. You can choose unlimited, you can add unlimited pages to your site. Um, the world is your oyster. So you can go ahead and click all these tabs here. I um, just want to point out website content. This is where you can go back in and edit your website, your homepage content, um, edit your anything in here, header, footer, template. All of these are all controlled. You don't have to keep them. You can change your template every day if you'd like. So once you're happy with your navigation menu and you're ready to go live, um, you do have to contact us and we will push you live to the domain that you own. We will direct you to where to purchase the domain if you don't have one. Now if you just went through this wizard with me and said, uh, I can't do that, we do have a team that can help you with that. So our mate team, they're marketing and technology experts. For $259, they will set this all up for you. They will do your SEO. They will do your navigation menu. They will. Anything that you want done, they will do for you in that $259 um, startup price. That is optional. If you want help transferring your old content, all of that, they do that as well. If you just wanted assistance while doing this 8-step um, wizard or had any specific questions, you can call our agent support team, and they can help you with that. The last thing I wanted to touch on was the online help. So this blue question mark up here, if you hover over it and click online help, you can see the online help menu that we have available. It's easily sorted by the tabs at the top of connect. So anything pertaining to real estate can be found under the real estate tab, communications, membership, so on and so forth. There are also video tutorials in here. In addition to this help menu, we will be sending up a follow-up email to all the agents. Um, basically going over everything that we covered today. So if you have any questions, you can refer to those or you can contact our agent support line, which I'm going to put up on the board right now. Okay. So that is all for me. I'm going to take questions now. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat. And Victoria and I will be happy to answer them for you.